Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're enjoying your Wednesday. Hope no one had a heart attack after tonight's or last night's election. Uh, it was pretty early night, and um, compared to some of the last elections we've had, I mean, we knew Trump what by twelve thirty was going to be president. Um, yeah, that's pretty early compared to what's happened in recent memory. Um, but it, you know, it was predicted in some ways because some of the pollsters had thought that it could be an early night by 10 or midnight, we would know who the president was going to be. And that wasn't the, them talking about Harris. They were thinking it would be an early night as in Trump would win. So... I think people got to, if you're shocked that Trump won, um, <clears throat> obviously I voted for Trump, but if you're shocked, then I think you need to reevaluate your life and probably reevaluate the sources of information you get because therein lies most of the problem. Like, I'm just going to throw out a weird example that's not exactly like truth, like 100% mathematical truth here, but let's say for one second, America has 100 pollsters, okay? And let's say only 10 out of that 100 pollsters are neutral to conservative. The other 90 all have severe leaning and bent towards liberal polling and what I mean by that is it's a psyops a military term it's known as a psyops it's really weird because we don't usually use psyops on the public but it's essentially a psyops only except the liberal democratic mouthpiece called the press the newspaper print and digital they run cover for the democratic party they can run a poll or they can take a, you know, a study and they will intentionally dock it. So let's just say all along this time for the last three months, those 90 pollsters were finding the race within three percentage points. What a lot of them were doing was you'd look, read the polls and they would say, well, the poll was you know, a five or six point lead by Harris, right? It was only kind of when the cat got out of the bag that they had to kind of come back to reality, right? But most of them never really came back to reality, right? And what I mean by that is real information was shown through Atlas Intel, Rasmussen, um... What's the other one called? Telfogger, Fagger, or how do you pronounce it? There's at least three. I know there's some other ones uh, that exist. Uh, they're not the only ones. I just can't think of the other ones. But like I said, the list is really small. That's my point. Um, <clears throat> and it didn't matter if they lean conservative or not. They're not. They're just presenting you the information. Um. And so there's no bias to it. They're just telling you who they think is going to win. But that's not how the liberal ones work. The liberal ones literally go out of their way to bend the information. They're not bending per se. They're lying to you. And, um, and that's just been happening for years now. Years. Years upon years upon years. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. But I'll give you another example of this. Uh, one day before the election happens, or was it two days before the election happened, you had that Ann Saltzers, or how you say her name, out of Iowa. Why did she even release a poll? And why did she choose to release a poll that she knew there was no way it was right? I don't think for one minute she thought that Donald Trump was going to lose the state of Iowa. But she goes ahead and puts out a poll 
that she supposedly had been sitting on for a long time that Harris was going to win by, I don't even know what the points were, but like let's say north of five or six points. I mean, it was absurd. I can't even remember when Iowa didn't go Republican. I mean, I think it, Obama was the last time who won it. And there was nothing in the state of Iowa that made you think it wasn't going to go Republican. So basically, my point is, probably under insider pressure by her own liberal parties, uh, once again, liberal bend, she she goes ahead and gives in to pressure and puts out a complete bogus um, poll, which probably she should be shamed and never allowed to put a poll out again. But these these are what they are. That this is what it's become. Psyops. The idea behind it is is if we can discourage the other side and let them make them think in their brain that the lead is insurmountable. They'll stay home and not go to the polling booth and vote. That's what all that's about. Is it effective? Well, may, yeah, probably, because, I mean, you know, all the countries in the world use it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's probably effective. I don't know where it ranges on a percentage. You know, does it discourage 10% of the vote? I mean, I, I don't know. But it's essentially what they do. They're running psychological psyops against you. The problem in the bigger picture is it's your constitutional right to vote as a citizen. That's true, but most people shouldn't be voting. And what I mean by that, I'll unpack that a little bit for you, is most people have no idea what's going on in their own country. Democrats are a great example of this. You remember back months ago, one of those early <clears throat> campaign rallies. It was one of the first rallies Harris had where people actually showed up. Um, and it was that famous one where she was talking about price control. Oh, we're going to have cheap food in America again because we're going to stop the grocery store chain from price gouging. Well, it's so it's such a bizarre statement because... FDR did price gouging way back in the day. It's not a new concept. I mean, or price control, my, my bad. Price control, it never works. But the second thing is, it's, it's another example of just being out of touch. There's no price gouging going on at your grocery store. Your grocery store, if you look into this and the research on this, and there's plenty of people who did the research back after she made the statement. <clears throat> Most grocery stores only have a margin of 3-5%, and if you're Walmart, who's really good at doing stuff, maybe 10 or 15% margin. That's not much, man. This The old business concept would be Everyone has a 50% margin um, built in, but it's not true. Not it's, it's becoming less true now, especially at grocery stores. Grocery stores is like going to McDonald's. They they rely on volume. You know, someone's gonna we're gonna sell two thousand gallon or two thousand gallons of milk per week, right? McDonald's knows they'll sell their two dollar burger twenty thousand times. And that's how they make a profit. It's all just fake, though, is my point. It's all fake. But these people are generally ignorant. By the way, I'm a Republican, and I see it in my own party. Even in my own family. You should, you should take some time to be an informed voter when you vote on things. And you shouldn't be necessarily nutty or crazy independent we say the independent party but understand the independent voter really doesn't exist but that being said by definition you should be independent thinking and not allow yourself to be anybody's mouthpiece which is the problem with the democratic party today it's just a big problem but more importantly before you go to the poll and vote, make yourself informed. 
you know, make yourself informed. Um, it, 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 you don't have to be an expert. You just got to know, like, the top two, three issues, <laughs> you know. Because, for example, like, yeah, women might have been burnt up over the whole Roe v. Wave thing. But abortion's not even a... When it comes to all the problems your country has that you live in, abortion's not even a top ten issue. And why is anyone bent over backwards about that anyway? That's another thing that never made any sense to me. Because I do know history. And real, and the abortion argument isn't even relative history. Most people talk as if this was some constitutional right given to them. You know? <laughs> it doesn't even exist in a hundred years of American history is my point. And the Supreme Court who put Rove and Wave in place is one of the most corrupt courts in American history. That's the other thing. So yeah. Uh, but it's not even a top 10 issue. You look at all the problems uh, going on today in this world, including America overspending, that's a far greater issue. Because Roe v. Wade never really changed. They just made sure your your tax dollars aren't killing babies anymore, basically. They sent it back to the state. So... Yeah, you're going to have different states ruling different things. But who cares? That's what that's a precisely what's supposed to happen. Um, but it's not even a top issue. That's what I'm saying. Like, know the issues and go cast your vote. And don't just be sub subjugated to um, the Democratic Party and its BS lies. It's... Is Trump Hitler? No. Is he fascist? No. Is there anything remotely close? No. I mean, you want to go watch a real Nazi video? Go waste your time and go watch one. That's what real, that's what real Nazism and fascism looks like. It's ridiculous. They're all just. It's like calling everybody who's white a racist, right? It is. It it becomes meaningless over time. Because when you start using that stuff, which have real serious words have meanings, right? And by definition, those things are serious. But when you falsely tag everybody in a culture that it loses its meaning, people just start rolling their eyes or whatever. Okay? It's stupid. So what do I think we should look possibly to? Well, <clears throat> I think right away... Although I have no inside knowledge on this, I'll self-admit this to you. I would think you're going to see a serious change concerning Ukraine. Um, I don't know how fast this will happen, but I think Trump will rile the gate, be pretty aggressive at pursuing it. But I don't think it's going to. I don't think he's going to risk Ukraine over, say, domestic policy. I think domestic policy will come before that. But I do think you're going to see a, a, a probably a stall in military aid. Very little coming Ukraine's way. You're going to see heavy hands on basically putting an end to that war. I think it will be presented to Russia, both sides. I also can possibly maybe see, and just like ISIS in Syria... If Russia just refuses, to some extent, whatever, once again, whatever these things will be, um, you know, you and I aren't going to be privy of those conversations, but maybe, it, maybe the end out of the war itself is just driving Russia out of Ukraine for Ukraine. In other words, the fastest way to the end is just to drive Russia out of Ukraine. <laughs> I'm not saying that's going to happen. I actually think that would be very unlikely but yeah i think you're going to see the ukraine war come to an end sooner than later not only that ukraine is just going to unilaterally go out on itself and just keep fighting but you understand none of the european union members can replace america's weaponry that it gives 
But there's no point in keep sending Ukraine weaponry when they don't have the manpower to fight a war. Matter of fact, they're losing the war. That's another example of the PSYOPs, right? You watch all your favorite anybody YouTube channels, Times Radio, Silicon Curtain, all these guys who are just fake news all day long, 24 hours a day, including the Enforcer. And all they do is they show you, oh, Ukraine used a drone and blew up a Air Force base today, or they'll show like an army tank blowing up. Meanwhile, well, that meaningless things are happening. Out east, Russia's advancement continues. Russia has been unstopped for 18 months straight now. I've been marking them on my counter. Counter. 18 months straight now. Just nonstop advancing. Now, they're not big gains, but all those gains have added up to where we're at now, the largest time, any time of the war, and, or are we getting close to like 15, 20 towns later, back under Russia control? That's crazy. But that's what 18 months of straight gains have done. It's hard for me to even remember it, because this started all the way back. We're in 2024. This started back in June 2023. And we're in the back end. We're basically two months away, less than two months away of 2024 being over. So this is what happens. I don't think it'll continue. None of the European partners can backfill it. I doubt Trump is going to fight a war for Ukraine just like Biden didn't do it for Ukraine. And obviously no one in the European Union will either. So, I mean, unless something changes, like maybe North Korea sends 100,000 troops to help Russia, I can't imagine anything's going to change on that front. Although I did read an article the other day saying, that's basically saying uh, Russia's friend, I forget the country now, was like, hey, they want to be a part of this war, too. So it could maybe be a third country jumping in. But other than that, I just don't see this lasting much longer. And I've been consistent on my YouTube videos, which I told you at the back end of this year, you'd be finding out more about the peace trees and deals happening behind the scenes because it just is what it is. I cannot imagine the war will last if, if America just completely withdraws, I can't imagine it's going to last much longer. Whether they work with Trump or don't, I don't imagine it's going to happen. And by the way, no one should be surprised. Was it at the, um, was it the Czech Republic president, I believe it was, at the United Nations here a while back, a few weeks back when they were in New York City. He's the one that actually slipped it out of his mouth and said, Ukraine, he just told you what everyone should be already thinking long ago, which was Ukrainians in the world need to get used to the idea of Ukraine looking different. And he specifically spelled it out and says, like, eastern Ukraine will be under Russia's control now. And what's left is what's left, you know. And that's basically where we're at today. I mean, you can't stop them. And uh, you don't have the weapons to stop them. I and you don't have the manpower, which is the most important puzzle piece here. So, and he took a lot of flack for that. But he's not the only one that said it. Going back to, uh, was it the spring of 2023, if I remember right? Abe Lincoln, Blinken and Austin both said publicly, live on TV... That both parties should be looking for an off-ramp to end this war. Now, they both took some serious shit and later on they apologized. But, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of people for basically a year and a half to two years now who have said the war needs to end. And these are major people as far as in those positions on the war needing to stop. 
It's not a new thought, man. It, it's just over. Ukraine's days, best days are beyond them as far as the war goes. Their air defense isn't going to be any better ever. It, it won't be as good as it has been in the past because they've now used all their old Soviet Union air defense bullets up. <clears throat> and America can't supply them with enough air defense. Once again, $10,000 drone versus a $4 million missile. Yeah, the missile's going to hit that drone every time, but money-wise, you can't shoot that many of those down. It doesn't make dollars and cents. Don't make sense on that. But anyway, that's it. I think that's one of the biggest things you're going to see right away. I think you're going to see the extension of the tax law lower taxes, maybe even push the lower corporate tax even lower. All right, talk to you later. Bye.